Thank you. I'm actually going to start a minute early. How's that? <laughs> when does that ever happen at work stuff? <laughs> never say it was, was never early. <laughs> um, my name is Louis Rosenthal. Um, most of you already know me. Um, and instead of talking about ARCA OS this afternoon, uh, I'm going to be talking about NetDrive for OS 2. Now, I'm just going to contradict myself because I said I was not going to talk about Arca OS. I will tell you that there will be a version of NetDrive bundled with Arca OS. It will be feature limited, and we're going to talk about that in a couple of slides. But a lot of what I'm discussing here will be pertinent to Arca OS, just as it is for OS2 Warp and Ecom Station. Still on slide one. Okay, that's fine. So a lot of people say, well, what's what's NetDrive? Because there there is another project, I believe, uh, it's a Linux uh, a Linux application called NetDrive. That's not related to NetDrive or OS2. NetDrive or OS2 is not ported from Linux. It's uh, it was originally developed for OS2, and it is maintained by its original author. Mm -hmm. It's essentially a plug-in based file system driver. So normally on OS2 we have installable file systems, IFSs, which were quite novel at the time that OS2 was released. Essentially what it meant was that instead of the file system being tightly coupled to the operating system like the FAC file system is to DOS, we can install drivers to access a whole host of file systems, which indeed is the way Linux works today. In OS2, we generally have, we've, we've historically had the FAT file system for FAT16, and we've had HPFS. Later on, IBM released JFS, the journal file system, and then Sometime after IBM's involvement, when Ecom Station became the, the standard for OS2, we had bootable JFS. We have bootable JFS now. NetDrive works the same way, except that NetDrive installs its own file system, and then that file system driver allows you to plug in support for other file systems, which are then mount to letters to be able to access in OS2. We call that mapping. And you can do some interesting things with mapping because you don't necessarily need to map a drive letter to the root of any particular plugged in file system. So you can map a drive letter three or four directory levels deep into something. So if you have the plugin installed, let's say, for reading ISO files, which are CD or DVD images, you can map a drive letter to a directory three or four levels down from the top, and then access all of those files from that point downward using that letter in that drive. What happens when you run out of file name length, you know, the, the maximum length of a name? I don't know. I'll have to ask Vitaly about that. <laughs> it, it installs easily on Warp 4. It has a proprietary installer. It does not use Warp in, and it does not use the what we call the venerable IBM installer, thankfully. <clears throat> um, there is a derivative work, Ecom Station Virtual File System, EVFS, which ships with Ecom Station. Uh, Ecom Station 2, at least. It work well as NetDrive. No, it doesn't work as well as NetDrive. There will be, as I say, a special edition plan for inclusion in ARCA OS 5. Essentially, the limitation for the special edition in ARCA OS 5 will be that it only supports a limited number of plugins. 
if you need to support a half dozen different file systems, you should upgrade to the full version of NetDrive. That upgrade will work seamlessly with the graphical utility included with Arca OS. So if you get Arca OS and you have, let's say, the maximum three different file systems supported in that, we haven't settled on a number yet, so don't quote me. And you find that later on you need to use four or five or six different file systems and you upgrade to the full net drive. But you're accustomed to using the, the graphical utility to map your drives that we include with Arca OS. Mm -hmm. You will be able to continue using that same utility after you upgrade to the full version of net drive. So what makes it special? The support for new file systems is as easy as installing a new plugin. And most plugins come with their own installer, uh, which is very simple. It copies a couple of files and makes one configuration change. And generally, you don't even have to reboot the system in order to activate the new plugin. The interface for managing drive letter assignments for mapping is consistent across whatever file systems are plugged in. So if you have the ISO plugin, if you have the Samba plugin, if you have the FTP plugin, if you have the NTFS plugin, which allows you read and write access to Windows NTFS volumes, you can map and manage all of those mappings the same way. That is all consistent. The resource requirements are very low. So you don't need to have a machine that's got gobs and gobs of available memory in order to run NetDrive. And the developer is very accessible. If there's something that is not in NetDrive and you have a use case for it, all you need to do is ask. I have not had him say to me one time, no, I'm not going to do that. What I've had him say to me is, how soon do you need that? Those are the kinds of people I like to work with. <laughs> and he's also never said to me, well, why would you want that? <laughs> he's never said that to me. So here's some example plugins for you. So. The local file system plugin. Let's say I want to use Drive Q to access a volume that's a directory that's five or six layers deep. Well, I map Drive Q to that to that directory, and then that directory and everything below it becomes available as Drive Q. This works out really, really well if you're working on software that was, for instance, developed for someone who had hard paths configured. Paul's ports. Paul uses Drive U for a lot of his development. And all of a sudden, something doesn't work. Well, it works if it's on Drive U. I don't have a Drive U. Well, that's how you get Drive U. The FTP plugin. Now you can map a drive letter to an FTP server or a directory on an FTP server, either on your local network or across the world. And it's just a drive letter. I use that every single day. It is absolutely fabulous. The latest version of NetDrive, NetDrive 315, which was the first version of NetDrive released in five years, includes some major fixes to the FTP plugin, and it makes the FTP <coughs> plugin so easy to use. And it works very much, very, very much like a local, like you just put a CD-ROM in your in your your drive. That's how it works. Does it support passive mode? It does support passive. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the Samba plugin, so you can map a drive letter to a Windows share on a modern Windows server. And we now have a Samba 4 plugin, so even the most modern Windows servers 
you can access, and Linux servers that are running Samba. An ISO, let's say you want to access, you have an image for a CD, for a, a, a DVD. And yes, Blue Line is a DVD. It outgrew the CD size several iterations ago in our alpha stage. So you want to access files around the Blue Line and ISO without having to burn the disk again. Well, you can use the ISO plugin and you can map that to a drive level. And now, all the content on the Blue Lion image is available on the drive eye as though you burned the DVD and put it in your drive. A little question, I guess. Now, with NetDrive, you can uh, map all these drives. Mm -hmm. Variety of file systems. You mm -hmm. can read and write to all these file systems. You can read and write to read-write file systems ah. where you have the proper rights to read and write to those file systems. You can read only from file systems that are normally read only. So in other words, I can't mount the Blue Lion ISO and change a file on it. Okay? That I can't do. Because the ISO file system, by definition, is a read only file system. Even if the media on which it's stored is read write. And the um the security is handled in the GUI or whatever, the, like the FTP needs to use already password. Yeah, I'm going to show you how to do okay. that. I'm, I'm going to give a, a little bit, uh, a demo of how that sets up. Some more plugins. So, the FAT file system. So, you, you need to access a FAT button. Um, and I believe the FAT, fi the FAT file system fat. driver also handles VFAT. It is. Long VFAT. file names, yeah. Um, it works just like, just like the local file system driver. The NTFS file system, it's a little, if you're not used to Linux device names, it looks a little odd. But essentially, I'm mapping drive N to the device, hard disk B, partition 1. It's a little tricky for NTFS. It's, it's on my list to complain about. but. <laughs> We'll get there. RSJ file system. How many people here use RSJ CD writer? There you go. Now, if you're familiar with RSJ CD writer, you'll know that the images created by RSJ CD writer are 40 bytes offset. So if you want to access them like regular ISOs, you need to either convert them or you can use the RSJ file system driver for NetDrive, which automatically does the 40 byte offset and then you can treat them like any other ISO. DAV. Everyone familiar with, with distrib uh, distributed authoring and versioning? Yeah. Um, if you do any kind of uploading to NetLabs, Adrian doesn't support FTP upload. He only supports web DAV upload. So all of my NetLabs directories to which I have upload privileges are subdirectories under drive X in net drive for me. So I have drive X is my DAV drive and every single project is listed as a subdirectory under there and each one goes to a different URL on the NetLabs server. Extremely convenient. All my credentials are stored securely in the net drive configuration I'm not prompted to log in every time I need to access it. And it just works. Read, write, erase, move, rename, no problem. Works like any other, any other local file system. And some more plugins. So secure FTP, which is encrypted FTP. Um, there's a new version of the secure FTP plugin available. That's a commercial plugin. It's available in the Arkanoa in the Arkanoa store. It's done by the author of NetDrive, <coughs> and it is. Uh, there were some significant improvements, I believe, in this this latest release, and it's very affordable. I think it's like fifteen dollars on our, our site for a license, a, for a lifetime license, which entitles you to upgrades and what have you, bug fixes. NFS3, if anyone is still using uh, NFS volumes, we know there's NFS2 and NFS3. Two different plugins for those file systems. The 
NFS file system in OS2 is extremely buggy. It's very, very funky. Don't use it. It will, it has the potential to do some really nasty things to your local machine, <coughs> as in hangs and reboots and things like that. That's entirely safe to use. Encrypted virtual file system. So, let's say you have a directory on your drive and you want to encrypt the contents of the directory. You can use the encrypted virtual file system called NDcrypt. Again, that's a commercial plugin. It's available from the ArcanOA store. And it gives you a, a selection of different encryption methods to use, algorithms. Um, and you're able to access that encrypted directory with a drive level. There is a commercial plugin for Dropbox. Everyone familiar with Dropbox? Yeah. The web download service? Yeah. The Dropbox plugin is available from Bitwise. That's their commercial product. Uh, it's very good. I understand. I don't use Dropbox myself except to download. And it is frustrating enough for me to download from Dropbox. But if you need to upload to Dropbox, that's the that's the way to do it. That works nicely. Does it? I would imagine that it would. It's all the really great thing about NetDrive is that when you install a new plugin, it's not like you've got to learn new software. There's, I mean, yeah, there's. When you, when you map something, you need to know what the syntax is for the file system to which you're mapping. So, for instance, the NTFS file system, you need to know dev whatever. And you need to know when you're mapping to a Samba share that you need the server and you need the, yeah. the directory. But NetDrive itself, you know that you're going to open the NetDrive control panel and you're going to create a re you're going to create a, a volume, and you're going to map a resource to the volume. All that is, is the same from one file system to the next. So a net drive consists of several components. Um, in config sys, it installs NDFS 32 IFS. That's the installable file system driver. From config sys or from startup command, it's going to start the net drive control program. That's the actual engine that runs NetDrive. <coughs> Normally, it's in config sys. We've discovered that with the Samba 4 plugin, some systems, depending upon memory, do not like to start it from config sys. Instead, we start it from startup command, and it runs without crashing. The latest version of NetDrive, if, it's already, if the control program is already starting from startup, will respect that and leave that statement in the startup. There's one set statement that's added to config sys, which essentially just tells NetDrive where, where it's installed, so it knows where to find itself. And the plugins live in the subdirectory ND plugs. They're very simple. So to install NetDrive, it's proprietary installer. You, you, you download the software, and you, it's shareware. So you can download it and try it restriction-free for a month. See how you like it. You download it, unzip it. You'll see ND inst. I'm going to show it. We're, we're going to go through the install on it on the, uh, the T61 over here. It will detect running instances and tell you NetDrive is already running. Do you want me to stop it? Do you want to stop it yourself? And it will install itself. And as I say, it will respect whatever statements you've already created for it in your configuration files. After that, after doing an upgrade or an installation, the only thing that's left is to reboot to load the IFS. Because that's got to be loaded as a as a driver in config sys. Plugins require if they use the automated installer, uh, require that the control program is running, <coughs> and they will 
typically the, the installer, which is really just a script, will warn you if the control program is not running. So what you do is you just unzip the, the plug-in package from temporary directory and you run the install script and that's it. If you want to do it manually, you can copy the files to the mdplugs directory and then you have to edit one line in mdcontrolconfig, which lives in the net drive installation directory, and just add the name of the new plugin that you've added. That's it, then the plugin is, is, is live. There's no special stuff, it's a text file, it's very simple to edit. Logging is very important if things don't go well. And there is always the potential for error when we're talking about computers, right? Unless, I mean, unless there's someone here who's never had a, an error on a computer before. <laughs> <laughs> So you can configure logging in the, the ND control config file. You can configure the, the verbosity of the logging, where the log is going. And specific plugins have their own logging. So in other words, the NetDrive control program can log whether it's loaded a plugin, whether there were any errors reported during loading the plugin. But if you have problems copying files to a particular file system, that logging is probably going to be up to the plugin itself because that's going to be file system specific. That configuration will be determined by the plugin that you're using. You need to look at the documentation for each, each plugin. Um, for instance, the Samba plugin logging requires that you create ndpsmb.dbg, and it's just a, it can just be a blank file. Just create that at the root of the drive, and all of a sudden you will get tons of information in your, in your debug box. You have to have all these uh, partitions already ready to allocate those, uh, those mm -hmm. drive letters. No. No, no. that's the point. Letters. Well, really? Yeah. Well, so for, for instance, um, Let's, the, the, what you need is you need these drive letters to be available. Yeah. Well, yeah, available. So let's say your machine is configured with drive C, drive D, and drive E. Okay. I can't use, if I boot from drive C, I can't use D or E as net drive drive letters, but I can use drive F, G, H, I, J, K, and so on and so forth. So I tell net drive to create drive F for um, for a a net drive file system for one of the plugins, and then I map a remote file system or an uh, an ISO image that's already on drive C to drive F. That's how that's how it works. The only time a directory is the only time a directory is required or created is when you are using the ndcrypt file system. You'll you'll grab an existing directory and encrypt the contents of that directory. That's great. You don't have to mount it to a drive letter at all. You mount it to a directory. Yes, you can mount it to a directory. So you, for those of us who are drive letter challenged, I've got 11 <laughs> drives mounted as drive M. Right. As I was saying before about about my, my DAV connections to, um, to NetLabs, I have drive X configured for all my DAV connections. So the Lucid project is mapped to x colon backslash Lucid. And the, um, the GCC project is mounted to x colon backslash GCC. They go to different remote locations and they're all subdirectories of drive x. So I only use one drive letter, but I've got a whole series of directories underneath that are mapped to different locations remotely. Does that make a little bit more sense? I really wanted to do a live demonstration. I mean, I'm going to do a live demonstration of the installation and I'll poke around some of the icons. I really wanted to do some file transfers with it, but I honestly ran out of time to set up the, the demonstration environment. So that didn't work out today. Any other questions over this side of the room I talked? No? 
Okay, good. So, uh, I think I'm up to the demo. So, uh, give me two minutes to change cables, or maybe less. We may get lucky. And by the way, this machine is running ARCA OS 5, okay. latest alpha. So it's going to look cool. Oh, of course it's going to look cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to look, it's going to look oh. very cool as soon as it gets some signal. There, there we go. Oh, yeah. It's pretty cool. Does it roar when it starts? It might have had a sound driver. <laughs> Um, so I should, uh, well actually I don't have, this doesn't do, this only does mouse buttons, right? It doesn't do mouse, uh, it's not a, that's not how I've done. okay. So here <laughs> is, um, here's what the net drive, this is uh, the net drive zip extracted into a, a temporary directory. This is, this is what, what you get. And there's the installation program right there. And so the terms of use, and I agree, because if I don't agree, I can't install it. That's the default installations, the boot volume of the NT, uh, NDFS directory. And I wanted to create a folder for me. And that's it, it's installed, it's done, okay? Now all I need to do is shut down and restart. There's the file system driver. Okay. <clears throat> Got a solid state hard drive in there? No. no? Mm -hmm. So it's much faster at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, what you didn't see on the way up is the, um, you didn't see the, uh, the snap logo, because this is running the, the latest build to snap on it. Come on, come on. What's the problem here? Does that support like, you know, wide screens and stuff that snap? Not yet. Right mouse button with the range? Uh, no, no. It seems that my desktop is my desktop is stuck. Why is that? Put in a ticket. It's, it's it's not. No, there's definitely something something wrong with the screen resolution on the uh, the app. Let me let me boot up normally without this thing connected here. Hold on one sec.
So is there a Google Drive plug? No. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, so when it's not hooked up to the projector, it boots up just fine. So let's try one more time. Now I did pull it out of place. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's good. That's good. It's good? Yeah. Sorry. All these black cables down here, I can't see anything. Yeah. Let's see how that goes. Because this chipset isn't supported by directly supported by Snap yet, I don't get any of the dual monitor stuff working. I can't switch it back and forth. I've got to boot it, connect it to the projector. Oh, come on. Yes, yes. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I do have a little bit of icon creep going on here. That needs to get fixed. There we go. Okay, so here's the net drive folder right here. And generally, this is the thing you're going to want to be playing with right here. And what you'd do is you would, you would go to volume and you'd attach a new volume and you'd find a drive that's not in use. That's the first drive that's not used by the system locally. And now I have a, a mount point. From there, I can map other things. So I would map a resource, mount a resource to drive E, and I could use the, the local plugin, which comes with NetDrive, and I can browse to a local directory on drive C. Let me go to my, I know where I'll go. Go to my home directory, and I'll map that. Oh, come on. Sorry about that. I'm going to select the... No. I thought it was there. Once you map that subdirectory, it's only accessible through NetDrive and then letter. Drive. No, it's also accessible the other way uh, the, as the well. Way. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to mount it. So now, if I go here and I go to so your split view, there's Drive E. And you'll notice that Drive E is really that masquerading as Drive E. There you go. Same thing. Now, if I wanted to do this differently, I could unmount this. So, and I could say, create a new mount point at E. And I'm going to call this um, mount one. So now I could mount my home directory to mount one and I could create a new mount point at E called mount two and I could mount something else to mount two. Mount resource local source directory Mount, and I can create a new resource that would, here. That could be an FTP resource. That could be an FTP resource. It could be something else, some other file system entirely, if I want it. Right, and they would all be accessible under Drive E as different directories. Hmm. 
So in this case, I'll make them both local <laughs> just the because that's successful. With the uh, different file systems. Hmm? Would it be uh, where the drivers come in for the different, like you want to let Ah, I'm going to show right, you that in a second. Right. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, oh, okay, sorry. It didn't like that one. And if you look for a file on that drive, it'll look kind of like on, on MVS and concatenation sequence. You know, where the first directory will be looked in first, and then if it doesn't find it there, it'll look in the second directory you've attached, et cetera, et cetera. Follow me? Well, if I if I specify it that way in my path. In other words, on OS2... No, it, but did you, it, what you just did was under one drive letter you loaded... You had, you. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm backwards. I have it backwards. Now, what I can do, because OS2 does this, I don't know why we lost the other colors, and I'm... I'm all yeah. tinted blue yeah. now. Is there? No. I'm not sure what happened here. Is, it, is, is, is that one loose? There uh, we go. Thank you. Um, so now E is going to look like this. Here's drive E. That's my home directory and that's my user directory. Okay. Um, because OS2 has a a fabulous feature which allows us to add items to the path mm -hmm. that may not exist yet. I could create something in my, my path to search my volumes that I know will be mounted by NetDrive when it comes up so that I can, I can do that. I can search it. I would caution you to be careful adding remote volumes to your path. <laughs> could be slow. Also, so could be very slow. Either. And also empty DLL prior to your block, you know, block that. Don't do that. Correct. Correct. Not not a good idea. But the I, the the thing is that if you do have resources that you know will be that will be responsive at some point in your boot cycle, and you're going to <coughs> want to be able to search those things, you can add them to your path first, and then have NetDrive mount them up. NetDrive allows you to save configurations of mounted volumes. Um, so for instance, I can go net drive volumes configuration save and I can save it to a name. And then I can load different configurations. When I'm at my office in Virginia, I load a configuration that gives me remote access to my office in New York across my VPN. Across Mason Dixon. Across the Mason Dixon line. <laughs> when I'm in New York, I go the opposite direction. I mount that same letter, but to the server in the other office. So all I need to do is load a different configuration of drives. All the rest of my drives in the configuration are identical. And I probably have about a dozen drives that I, I map at one time. That's the only one that changes from one office to the other. Um, I uh, just just as I did here, if NetDrive sees default dot dot config, it will load that default configuration. So it will, by default, save your last set of configurations. So what I'll do is I, when I go to the office the first time I boot up, I'll load the configuration to get to my other office. Then when I shut down the next time I boot up, it's going that's my default and it'll pick that one up for me. So I only have to make that change when I first get there. If I'm there for a week, I only have to do it the first day I'm there. I go back to the other office, the first day I'm there, I load up the other configuration, and that's my new default. Where are you voting? I vote in New York. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Can we say your vote will be wasted? <laughs> no. you, you could say that, but you know that's pretty much universal, right? Um, okay, so now let's say I want to add a plugin. So I have, I want to close this. The control program is still running. I just closed the configuration panel. The control program started in config sys. And if I open the control panel again, there are my mounted 
resources. Okay? When you talked about having configurations for your two officers. Yes. When you when you go to New York yes. and you first blew, you mm -hmm. said you changed the configuration. Correct. How? Oh. Net drive, net drive volumes configuration, load. And I have a configuration, see this one doesn't have any saved yet. But I have a configuration that says to New York. And I have one that says to VA. Now will it activate on the spot or you gotta reboot? No, it'll activate on the spot. It'll right away it'll it'll it actually prompts you. Here's another interesting feature. You can merge multiple configurations. So when you tell it you want to load a, a save configuration, it will say replace your existing drives or merge with your existing drives. And I used to do that. I used to merge them together. It just got to be easier to save just one set at a time. How does the precedence work with that? Um, well, you can... <laughs> What happens is, for instance, let's say you have two different resources mapped to drive G. The one that you merge becomes the second resource, and you'll still only see the first resource until you unmap it. So what you really need to do, if you do plan to merge resources, is you need to be careful which drive letters you select for different, for different things so that they fit together and not fit on top of oh, each other. Crash each other. Huh? Yeah. Exactly. But the important thing to know is that NetDrive will not fail if you do that. In other words, you're not going to cause the system to hang if you load conflicting <coughs> sets of, of drives. It'll just load one after the other, and you won't be able to see the other ones until you get rid of the, the conflicts. Do you have any uh, heavy delays when you, when you load the wrong configuration when you first arrive? Not noticeable. Um, my broadband in Virginia is not up to the bandwidth that I have in New York. So I have, um, I think in Virginia I've got uh, 10 megs down and 50, uh, sorry, 15 megs down and 10 megs up. Yeah, but what we're really talking about here is the network timeouts, yeah. not really the speed. You know? Well, remember, my, I'm on full time VPN, so there's not really a timeout at all. That connection's already made. I don't have to wait for my machine to make a connection to New York. It's firewall to firewall. I'm already connected. It's really just better when the directory is there. Yes, exactly. Greg? The FTP, you can sit and stare at a mouse for a long time on an FTP that's down. Oh, on an FTP that's down. Yeah, absolutely. It will, the, the, but I believe on, on FTP that the timeout is configurable. It's configurable, but... The problem is, is some of them are pretty slow, and so if you make it too short, you yeah. just never right, can. Right, right. So it becomes problematic. Right, right. Yes, that's that's true. That's true. Uh, so to install another plugin, here's a collection of plugins for NetDrive. Now, the DAV plugin from NetLabs is distributed as a Warpin archive. So that one's really simple to do. That one is just walk through the warp bin and there's the there's the plugin. That's the help file. And that's really all that I need. The DLLs are already installed <coughs> on this machine, so it doesn't need to install them again. Hmm. And plugins are DLLs. No, that plugin has some dependencies that need to be met. The like the Samba 4 plugin has dependencies. Just a few. Just yeah, just <laughs> about. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the way this warpin is is configured, handily enough, it will install those DLLs for you. Under the new system of using of using Yum and RPM, we wouldn't want to do it this way because then we end up with that conflict between the RPM installed DLLs and the Warp installed DLLs. We're working on that. So here I've just installed the DAV plugin. So if I go back to my NetDrive control panel 
and let's say I'm going to add a new volume, F. Now I go to Mount Resource and oh, it's not there. C. You didn't have the dependencies. <laughs> I probably did. I'm probably missing dependencies. I should have DAV showing up in the list. Oh, maybe. Uh, yeah, I could do that. Maybe that. Maybe that's what I need to do. I thought that that Warpin installer did that for me already, though. So you know what? That happened to me the first time yesterday, where I did that exact same thing. It's like, where? Why? Where is my Samba ship? And my, my, my SMB ship. And I can't. I think I rebooted the machine. But well, see, rebooting the machine would cause two things to happen. It would cause the control program to restart. Well, that's obviously. And it would cause, if there are DLLs that needed, if there are drivers that needed to be loaded, it would cause those to get loaded. But I think, let's it's see. Control program. Uh, yes, right. control program start. Uh, let's go here. Resource, mount resource. No, it's not there. I have to, I have to see what's, what's up with that. The PMDLL. PMDLL, that's, that's exactly it. But if I grab another one, like this one here, which is NDP arc zip, uh, I actually just unzip the, uh, the text file for this. This is a plugin that lets you view zip files, contents of zip files. So if I do this, so I open this, and I uh, extract the entire archive here. <coughs> extract. No, I don't need to overwrite that. All right, so there's the install command for this one. <coughs> Done. Okay. <clears throat> see if that one did what I think it should have done. Yeah. There you go. Archive. Okay. So now I'm going to select um, an archive type. Uh, I'm not sure what the syntax is for this. Tell me here. Um, I don't know. I've never used this plugin before, so I picked a bad one to use as an example, I guess. Uh, I think all I need to do is type the path of an archive file in there. Zip files, right? Right. Well, right. Is it a directory of zip files, or is it just you got to give it a full path? Does it have the I thought, let's see, what is this? There's a help there. Yeah, but the help isn't giving me plugin specific help. No. This this is an alpha build of this plugin, so um, I can't I can't fault the plugin. It's it's not normally it would show up in in here instead of giving me general help for for net drive. Um just try to pull that. No, it doesn't like that syntax. Um, Forward slashes. What happens if you, well, if maybe you just we stop it at the directory? Don't, don't have a file. What do we normally do? Do we have to say, do you have to say SMD colon to say you want an SMD type? Or is it, did you already pick the, uh, the resource type? type? Okay. Well, if I go back, it'll, it'll allow me to select local FTP or, right, so uh, okay. or this one. Yeah, maybe you need to okay, put like, a URL type. Because you're now in the directory. File code. Something like that. No, it's not. I have an idea. Let's drill over to the help file, the uh, arc help file, and just open it up. See if we get more help there. Hmm. 
And it looks like the only help that it installed is the, yeah, the text file there. So there is no plugin specific help for okay, this one. Go to ND plugs. Okay. Maybe the readme will help. Is there a readme? Oh, maybe there is a help. Can you Hold get on. the whole path for the. Here it is, right here. Oh, that's FTP. Sorry. FTP. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, there is no help file for this particular one. Let's see what... And this is what, what I was just reading. That's what I thought. Maybe you just have a typo in the name. Uh, where am I? Where's the zip file? ndparc.zip. It's under Home Downloads ND Plugs. It is? Oh, it's you know what? No, no, here we go. Here we go. Do you see it? Plug no, wait a minute. I don't see it. This is the extracted directory here. Yeah. Let me close that. NDP R. That's the one right there that that's I want. Copy file name. Copy file name. With path. Including path. There you go. Paste it in. <laughs> All right, so now what was I saying about typing? <laughs> so now, that should be that archive, but it's not working. Again, I picked, I, I picked an alpha plugin. I probably shouldn't have picked an alpha plugin to demonstrate the... Uh, um, I don't have an ISO handy, but the idea is if I use the ISO plugin here, right? That entire archive extract. I don't trust it. <laughs> what is it again? Is it uh, it's PL inst PL? There we go. <coughs> I'm going to stop the control program and I'm going to start it. I'll see what's in that guy. What do you think? Okay. Sorry. Look at the app and see where it's at. It still doesn't have it. It must not be working quite right. I don't think so. So now, oh, that was RS. Oh, ISO and RSJ installed with that at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So I can I can mount. An ISO. I don't know that I have one on this. Not on this machine, I don't think. Uh, no, I don't think I have. I don't think I have one to to test. But here, what I would do is I would just browse to an ISO and I would I would put it in there and. Generally, I don't need to make any other changes here. Just done, and now that CD is mounted as a as a drive from it. And the RSJ does the right. Yeah, you can do it from there, or you can use the the RSJ um, plugin instead. And that's NetDrive. Um, if I had something remote or I had some ISO, uh, an ISO, I could give you a little bit more of a demo. But it, it really does work. So, I mean, obviously, it's up to the plugin as to whether it's going to find the files and access them properly. 
Um, but net drive itself is very stable. It's very usable. Um, it's tried and true software. There used to be this thing called TDFS. Toronto Virtual File System. It had this very cool feature where you could concatenate multiple things under one. Mm -hmm. I forget if it was a directory. Uh, this doesn't yeah, matter. Toronto works under a direct. Well, you can do it on this. Yeah. You can make you using the using the feature that I used Both here. Yeah, here. And um, put them under one thing, yeah, and, one one and will they work? Yeah. In order. How do they work? All of that looks like it appears under Drive E, so I could. No, no, no. But if you created a directory, this is different. If you created a directory under there called, you know. I did create X. a directory under there. No, but just one directory. And then oh, you there's just multiple. My power shut off. Destination. Oh. Time for a reboot. No, no, it's not time for a reboot. The, the battery ran down. Oh. Battery ran down. Yeah, I don't yeah. think Netrive does that. Either. Yeah, you, you, you remember that? that yeah, very could, handy. Yeah. Some of this stuff is, you know, Netrive's funny. It's very good, but not a lot of people know about it. One of the things that it may get, I can't promise it yet, but it may get support for UNC paths. And if you think about it, what's the difference between a UNC path and a drive letter when you're looking for symbolic stuff? Who cares? You just got to think about the fact that you might like to use a UNC path to mm -hmm. those. As for, and also mounting multiple to the same drive letter. It's doable. It's, uh, I think it might be a little difficult with the plug-in when you get mix and match. I'm not clear on what okay, TVFS does got, for us. what TVFS will let you do. Uh, you got two directories, DLL2, DLL3. You mount them, merge them logically as DLL. I see what you're saying. Right, right, right. That's very useful because then you can you right. can supersede your normal thing. With right, right, else. right, right. I forgot. It's been a long time since I used TVFS. Yeah. Like, like in JCL, you could do this. See, here's the thing. We don't have that functionality now in, in NetDrive. Uh -huh. If I ask for it. Mm -hmm. They'll say, when do you want it? <laughs> we can probably get it. Yeah. I, as I say, the developer is very approachable. <coughs> and um, I have no problem asking. If, if we have a use case for it, I, I can ask for it. I'll yeah. leave that up to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you might want but to that's think a about the stuff that you used to use PDFS for. Why did you stop using it? I think it mm -hmm. stopped working. At oh. some point, it started trapping, or something. I forget yeah. why. Well, that's one of those problems. You know, it's not, it's quote unquote not supported. You know, I never had any trouble with it, but I never had a lot of use for it. Uh -huh. We used to use it at work because you, for versioning software, mm -hmm. you can use it. It was a very handy that thing. Yeah. Okay, so um, in conclusion, how am I doing with the time? Yeah. I got three minutes. Right there. Yeah. Okay, yeah, three minutes. So, if you're only going to use NetDrive for Samba, whether you're an individual or a large enterprise, whether you're using it on one machine or a thousand machines, it's entirely free. There's no registration required. It is free for unlimited use for Samba only. Well, is that really true? It's even, really true. Even because, remember, we had EVFS was only with sub-license with OS with ECS. Well, maybe EVFS, but NetDrive, and I confirm this with Vitaly, okay. NetDrive is completely free. It doesn't matter what the user is. It doesn't matter how many seats. If it's only used for Samba, it's free. If you need to use anything else or anything in addition to Samba, including the two plugins that ship with NetDrive, local and uh, FTP, then you must license your copy of, of NetDrive. The reasonable licensing fee is 29 bucks for a single user. I really don't think that that's out of reason for, a, a, for an application that is as useful as this. And when I say I use it every day, I'm not kidding. Every day, I use NetDrive. If you have file systems that support extended attributes, 
NetDrive is very happy to handle those. If the plugin supports extended attributes, you can move OS2 files with extended attributes till the cows come home. It's not a problem. There are very few utilities that work as well with native OS2 files. I mean, it's, it's really, really great stuff. There will be a special edition for Arca OS, and I believe that we are going to limit it to three plugins, but we have not set all of those details in stone yet. The important thing to know is that Arca Mapper, which is the graphical utility from Arca Noe, instead of using the NetDrive control panel, we have Arca Mapper. Arca Mapper will be just as happy with the full version of NetDrive as with the bundled version of <coughs> NetDrive. So when you upgrade your NetDrive engine, you don't need to change the front end and relearn new stuff for the front end. And all of your configurations that you saved for the bundled version will work just fine with the full version of NetDrive. So, plugins. There are some free plugins. Go to Hobbs, uh, search for NetDrive. There are some commercial plugins like SFTP, which is available from Arcanoe. NDCrypt is available from Arcanoe. Dropbox is only available from Bitwise. And if you go to the Arcanoe store and you look at the NetDrive category, there is a long list under the NetDrive product itself of plugins that are available with, with links to, to their sources if, if we don't sell them directly. Any other questions about NetDrive? Uh, what about the overhead of it? Is it relatively small? It is really or slim or? on resources. That's now... Two minutes into dinner. Two minutes into dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody Realize that that's a, that's a qualified answer, meaning Samba 4 is pretty big. So it's not NetDrive that takes up the resources. Understood, it's, yeah, so. it's the plugin. But if you're mapping a local directory or something, you would Very slim. It. I mean, yeah. we're talking about... Um, instructions here and there. Basically, it's a couple 17 calls. Yeah, it's, it's very slim. About 13 opcodes. Now there's the usual stuff. This is, if you think about how it works, since the plugins are ring three and the IFS is ring zero, there's that transition. But if it's done well, it's just shared memory that it's walking through. So it works right. well. Yeah. Now look, obviously, for in terms of performance, let's assume that let's assume for the sake of argument that we use the local um, drive mapping. You're not going to, just as Steve was saying, you're not going to get the same performance as if you go straight to the, to the file system using the JFS, IFS. But if you're going across the internet somewhere else, the performance hit by that ring three to ring zero transition, not going to that's the least you're yeah. 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 well, There's comparisons too, for instance, we have an ISO uh, plugin and we already have uh, false uh, ISO FS. Mm -hmm. And if you use that to go grab your, look at your ISOs, the ones that aren't compatible, is, can you really tell that the thing's slowing you down getting, as opposed to raw file access? No, no. <coughs> I, don't, I don't feel the difference. I don't feel the difference. So it's, it's light, on, it's fairly light on resources, and the performance is good. Obviously, the performance of the individual plugins varies upon the the quality of the plugin. Some plugins are more finished than others. Uh, some plugins are mature and are being updated, like the FTP plugin, the new SFTP plugin. Um, mature, being ma well maintained, updated. And then there are other alpha plugins, like the archive plugin I just showed you there. You know, um, that doesn't mean that that alpha plugin couldn't be enhanced and brought up to production quality. It's just not yet. Yeah, the one thing that really controls it more than anything else is the underlying protocol. For instance, FTP plugin. I defy you to get speed if you're doing read-write access to that file. It's fine for copying yeah. things and all that sort of stuff. 
but you start updating that file and things get interesting. Especially seeking. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's worth it seeking. And actually, I, the, the old one, they meant fixed it a little bit, but the old one would bring a new copy down for each read and write. It's much better now. It, this a little caching. Yeah, yeah, a little uh -huh. caching goes a long way. Yeah, we discussed that with the author way back when. Mm -hmm. we didn't pay much attention to whether it got fixed or not. No, it's um, it's good stuff. It's it's good quality software, and it's it's very stable stuff. I mean, you you don't boot up your system and then have your system lock up. Well, that's you, actually one of the benefits of being room three software. You know, mm -hmm. Traps and traps, and you know, it's not quite as bad. Right, right, right. It's good. It's it's very good stuff. Now, if you have the desire to make your own plugins, there is a toolkit available from the developer. It is not publicly available. All you need to do is request it. I have not heard of him saying no to anyone. Um, and then, please, feel free. Make some, make some plugins. We can all use plugins. Plugins are great. Commercial plugins, free plugins, they're all, they're all good stuff. Who is he? Hmm? Who is the guy? Uh, Vitaly Polenyov. And he's where? He's in Russia. Uh -huh. And is there um, a plug-in for like the WikiLeaks website? <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, as I say, he's he's very very approachable. Um, his English is excellent, so discussing things with him is very easy to converse, um, and he's very receptive. He's very receptive to bug to bug reports. If you say, "Look, I'm having a problem," and he'll say, "I don't see that. Can you tell me more about it?" He doesn't immediately dismiss you as being a kook. <laughs> Why do you still use OS two? You must be a nut. <laughs> Any other questions? All right then. Enjoy dinner. Okay.